Drew Taylor, CEO of AstroPrint, and I'm going to walk you through the setup of your AstroPrint for Education or AstroPrint for Enterprise Fleet Management account. Now, this video assumes you've already spoken with our sales team. They've set you up with uh, your demo fleet account, and now you're just ready to get off to the races. Uh, so first, you're going to log in, of course, and then go to the Groups tab, and you need to create a group to get started. Now, a group is a collection of resources. Uh, so within a group, you'll put users that can use all the resources, shared file folders, 3D printers, uh, printer profiles, and whatnot. Most organizations think of a group as uh, a location or a, a print farm, but if you have multiple, then you'll need multiple groups. Creating a group is as simple as selecting the parent group, uh, naming it, and describing it. Uh, which is optional, of course. Now, if you have a complex group structure, you're gonna to wanna to use our uh, visual group chart. And to kind of show you a little bit about what groups can do here is we created a sample university here that has an engineering class with a 3D printer lab, then an architecture class with two 3D printer labs uh, that are separate uh, of each other. Uh, so, of course, uh, some users may have only access to this art lab um, 3D printer lab, whereas others you may put in the architecture class because they have you want them to have access to both of these. Obviously, no one in the engineering class has access to the architecture class and vice versa. However, admins have access all the way down the chain uh, to whatever they need access to. So pre pretty straightforward. You may not need something that complex, uh, but it's available to you if, if you do. Now, after you've created your group, you're gonna to wanna to add uh, uh, 3D printers to your account. Now, first off, your 3D printer needs to be communicating with the platform. This means you either need A, an Astra box, gateway or touch, uh, connected to the printer, uh, or B, an uh, Octoprint with AstroPrint plugin in your Octoprint build, or C, you've purchased 3D printers that come with AstroPrint pre-installed. Regardless, you go into your AstroBox, Octoprint, or the, the printer software, and you log in to AstroPrint on the, on the device with the exact same credentials as you're using for your fleet account. Uh, that will connect it to the fleet account, but it won't show up here yet. You have to hit Add Printer, and this shows uh, machines that, have, that are communicating with the platform but haven't been assigned to anything at all. Come over, assign it to a group, and then add the printer, and then it's in. All right, so pretty straightforward. Next, you're going to need to add printer profiles and materials profiles. Uh, super simple. You can import them straight from the AstroPrint database if you want to use IR start and NG code and whatnot for it for the printers. Or, of course, you can create a custom printer profile select your own default slicing engine and certain NG code and whatnot. And very easy for materials then for each of these, you just come over and click the materials icon. Same thing, import ours or create your own uh, custom ones from, from scratch. Now uh, for creating entire slicing profiles, meaning your infill and raft or no raft and all of this, that's actually done on the front end of the system, and I'll show that at the end of the video. All right, uh, you want to create a shared file folder uh, for your group, or at least one, maybe several. It's as easy as hitting Create Folder, naming it, and selecting which group the folder is for. Then you'll see it here, Designs, if that folder has been shared into other groups uh, or not. Group queues are going to be very important for pretty much everyone using the system. Um, and creating your group queue is easy as naming it and selecting which group uh, it's in. Uh, for managing the group queue, you simply click on the group queue. Now, of course, this is only if your account has permissions uh, to manage the group queue. You would come here and you see we have a five-step process uh, for files in the group queue. If it's an STL, it's going to be under slice pending. You can simply you can slice it, or you can send a note back to the uh, 
uh, person that put it in the queue that it's unprintable. If it's been sliced, it's going to go into ready to print. Um, pretty straightforward. Same thing, you can do a few things. You can move it forward, discard it, report it as invalid. If you move it forward, you move it into an actual printer queue as opposed to a group queue, so that then it's in line to be printed. Uh, there's a printing list, and then finished. Uh, once it's finished, you can report success or failed and send a note to the original uh, uh, poster of that file. Uh, you can also retry it if uh, you just want to try it again. Maybe the first layer didn't print right or the power went out, who knows, and, and you just want to retry it without sending a notification. But the group queues, very straightforward. Um, now, once you've set all of that up, you're going to want to start inviting users. Oh, first we could come down to settings here. You can update your logo, change the name of your organization. You can also set default parameters for when you invite new users, do you want them all in a stock standard group with a stock role? Uh, so you can set that default here. So before inviting users though, let's, let's go over roles very quick. A role is a set of permissions. You can set as many roles as you want, name them whatever you want. For our default here, we did super admin, students, and teachers. And um, yeah, select whatever permissions you wish here. For example, here we have students can add files to the group queue, but they can't manage it. They can't slice uh, or, or anything like that. So you can set it up in any, any way you wish. And so as roles are set up, you can invite users. For now, you do this by typing in the email address of the users you wish to invite and hit invite. And then you will see they'll either be pending, accepted, or rejected under status. We will be releasing SSO capabilities. So most organizations, we realize this is not uh, functional when you have hundreds and hundreds of people every semester, or every year coming in. Uh, we'll also be releasing the ability to do bulk uploads through CSV. Um, and then you can come in and look at the existing users, what groups they're in. You see this, this particular user is in the group new students with the role of new student. And I could even add it and change that role right here. So that's all the basics on getting started. I also want to show you a few tips and tricks. Um, first is changing how you view the platform. So right now I am, I am in the admins group right here as a super admin. So of course I see everything I'm supposed to see, but now I could switch and say, well, I'm also in the Drew 3D lab group as a super admin. So let me see what happens if I log in as only being in that group and now you can see my entire universe has changed. The users that I would see uh, will be different. Uh, the permit, you know, all the permissions, it's all different uh, at this level. Now this engineering class, I'm actually in as a student. So I get to see, I can see what would someone logged in as a student see in this group. And I can see that I, I lose many, many permissions uh, because I'm only a student now. So that's very, very helpful in setting up your system, seeing what's going on with users. Another thing you could do is switch to the front end of the platform, uh, which is where you know users go through uh, uh, the design library and sending files to print using the build plate and whatnot. We won't go through all of that now, uh, but uh, I do want to show you how to create your own custom um, slicer profiles. So you just hit that uh, My Slicer Settings, New Slicer Profile, select the printer, select the material type, then add slicer settings, custom name. So then you name your new slicer profile, uh, and then you can change any of the settings you wish. Uh, if you want to change the actual slicing engine, you'll need to do that in the printer profile section. But uh, for each of the three slicing engines we offer, all of the settings within the engine are here. 
Uh, and then once you're done, you simply hit save and you've created a custom slicer profile. Again, assuming you had permission to do so. And that's it. That's the basics of getting started. Hopefully that helps. And please let us know if you have any problems.